you know, plastic is such a big problem, so we leave it up to the big people. <laughs> But what can we do now? As young people, how can we get involved? And I think it's the power of of young people today. You see it everywhere around the world. Tidak hanya di Indonesia, but around the world, young people are getting involved. But we know we have to break it down, right? Hello, I'm Umesh Fadke. I'm Gen X. I know all the trends among young people, even though I don't live them. And how do I know them? Because I sit down, listen, and understand the next generation through the ideas that move podcast, which derives from the L'Oreal Group's sense of purpose, beauty that moves. And in Indonesia, beauty that moves Indonesia forward. Hello, change makers. Welcome to the second episode of the Ideas That Move. podcast thank you for watching the first episode and i'm delighted to welcome my new guest on the second episode melati wisen melati wisen is a change maker and just at 21 she already has almost a decade of experience in working on a topic that is really close to our hearts at l'oreal and is very pertinent all over the world sustainability but she combines sustainability with possibility and spreads her message around the world did you know that the stuff that she started 10 years ago is now being done in 60 countries around the world did you know that she's now got a foundation that reaches out to millions of people around asia and i'll let you on a secret she's also a movie star hello semuanya nama saya melati uh, sekarang i'm 21 years old tapi my story uh, started when i was 12 years old so aku uh, ayah saya dari surabaya dan ibu saya dari belanda tapi saya sudah tinggal di bali untuk 21 tahun tapi waktu saya umur 12 aku sudah lihat masalah besar which was plastic pollution it was mm-hmm. everywhere and so together with my sister who was 10 years old at the time kita pikir oh kita gak mau tunggu sampai kita orang dewasa to take mm-hmm. action we want to start now what can we do right now mm-hmm. so we started our first ngo at the organization called bye bye plastic bags and it was really because we believe that Bali can be that leading island example and show the rest of the world that Bali can say no to plastic bags mm-hmm. wonderful and and where has that gone i mean you know that was 10 years ago and where has that gone and what is melati doing today yeah so it took tahun 2013 when we started so it almost is a decade mm-hmm. uh, from 12 to 21 years old when we started we had a team and we started to speak at schools raise awareness spend time with politicians and governmental meetings um but today we with bye bye plastic bags are in 60 locations all around the world so anak muda di seluruh dunia dia lihat what we are doing in bali and dia bilang oh kalau dia bisa so can i so young people around the world took bye bye plastic bags in 60 countries around the world and are trying to ban single use plastic bags as well but in bali finally thanks to the effort of so many organizations the ban is in place for plastic bags straws and styrofoam Fantastic. so the policy change has happened so how how did you make this happen i mean you were a young girl it's very easy to dismiss a young girl who's talking about bye bye plastic it's a nice project in school it can be a good hobby but uh, how have you driven it right up to policy change with politicians well the first important thing is to recognize that we did not do it by ourselves there were so many different organizations i think the the time was right mm-hmm. karena itu yeah, i always say it wasn't rocket science right if you go have you've been to bali of course and how many of you have been to bali or go anywhere here and you see the plastic pollution and you feel that you want to do something about it um but what we were uh i think specific about was that we we knew we wanted to tackle plastic bags mm-hmm. so when you have a big idea how do you get focused how do you choose your end goal mm-hmm. for us at 10 and 12 years old we thought okay our individual action can lead to saying no to plastic bags so again if we can do it so can everybody else and and what are you doing right now i mean these days uh, bye bye plastic bags has gone to 60 countries what are you doing right now i heard you're in a movie uh, yeah yeah, yeah, some... yeah so i graduated high school at 18 years old um a year early to film a movie mm-hmm. a documentary called bigger than us and this was an exciting journey because at 18 years old from bali I got to travel and meet other young change makers around the world. Uh, I went to Lebanon, I went to Lesbos, Malawi, Uganda, and I met change makers who are the same age as me, mm-hmm. focusing on changing the world in all different 
um, issues. So the climate crisis, but also the refugee crisis and access for girls to education. So for me, I learned so much during this documentary. And um, it's now, you know, making a tour around the world and entering classrooms uh, around the world. So I had the huge honor of, of taking part in that movie. I believe you were also filming, uh, you were also being shown at uh, the Festival de Cannes? Yes. Uh, last year, we walked the red carpet at the wow. Cannes Film Festival. Um, yeah, that was still, I think, pengalaman yang paling, you know, out of this world. Uh, I wore uh, Yogi Pratama on the on the red carpet. Uh, Dewi Mag took me through uh, the whole journey because it was a anak muda dari Indonesia, you know, on the big stage representing young people can create change, and young people want to see positive change. I think this is um, the hope that you see in the movie, mm -hmm. but also the work that I'm doing today in the movie, but also with the new project, Youthtopia. It's mm -hmm. all about showing that young people are serious about change, mm -hmm. but we do it in a way where we find joy in the mm -hmm. movement because mm -hmm. we know that change is possible. I, I really like your point about, uh, you know, picking the big idea and then focusing on that part which is really actionable, like, you know, plastic bags or or straws or styrofoam. And uh, one could look at that and say, what is that going to do to the whole world of, you know, plastic that's floating around? But, uh, you know, you have to start somewhere and you have to start somewhere so that you can make an actionable change. And I really like the fact that you picked something very specific and that has gone global and it, you've inspired people in 60 countries that's really really something and 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 you know what guys she's just 21 so imagine how many more ideas are coming up and how many more <laughs> millions of people are going to get uh, get inspired bravo yeah bravo. well thank you and you know umesh it didn't really come so um clear i remember when we were when we were like 10 or 12 years old uh when we first started my sister would say you know, plastic is such a big problem. So we leave it up to the big people. <laughs> but what can we do now as young people? How can we get involved? And I think it's the power of, of young people today. You see it everywhere around the world, tidak hanya di Indonesia, but around the world, young people are getting involved, but we know we have to break it down, right? We need to take action today whether it's saying no to plastic bags whether it's becoming plant-based whether it's being more conscious uh, as to where which products and which brands we buy um, this is something that is so deeply uh, a priority for gen z so i believe uh, you are you are now running a foundation called youthtopia uh, what exactly does youthtopia do and how is that extending from your idea of uh, say no to plastic bags so uh, we're doing this now for almost 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. And I would spend more time in other students' classrooms than in my own classroom. Mm -hmm. I spoke to over, you know, satu juta anak muda di seluruh dunia, and I would hear always the same question, no matter where I was, New York City, Tokyo, or here in Jakarta, I would get the same question from young people. Melati, how do I do what you do? Mm -hmm. How can I create change? Where do I start? Gen Z, we want to create change. Sometimes the biggest barrier is that we don't know where and how to start. So Youthtopia is now a learning platform where we create change maker programs, but not from a professor at the, another university program, but it's from young people to young people, sharing how we can work together, share and exchange knowledge so that we can accelerate change. Mm -hmm. That's what Utopia so is. So what kind of what kind of programs do you teach over there? We have master classes, workshops, uh, mentorship is a really big aspect of what we do at Utopia. Uh, my sister and I did a master class on uh, public speaking mm -hmm. uh, because this is a skill that I think is very important for young people to get better at and feel confident about owning their message. Uh, but we also have master classes about rethinking and redesigning packaging. What mm -hmm. does that look like from the eyes of Gen Z? We have um, impactful filmmaking, how to use the camera and how to do proper interviews and get a documentary style um, outcome, how to do a, a business plan or grant writing. You know, this is topics that should be taught in school, but at the moment with the traditional curriculum are missing. Mm -hmm. So Utopia complements that very much. To talk a little more about, you know, how uh, 
what is the status of sustainability in Indonesia and the whole plastic situation in Indonesia? Indonesia is a big generator of marine plastic. So how do you see the situation today? Is yeah. it better than it was 10 years ago? Is it worse? What's what's going on? I'm a big believer that we're, we're going in the right direction, but we're going too slowly. Mm -hmm. And that's not a reflection purely on Indonesia. I think this is something that we can say generally as a global society, we are moving too slowly. Mm -hmm. And that's the frustration a lot of the times of Gen Z, of young change makers, because things like a plastic bag ban should not have taken as long as it did. Mm. The implementation of these goals nationwide should not have taken, should not be taking as long as it is. Mm. Um, so I do believe that there's always room for improvement. And I still strongly believe that Indonesia, but even Bali specifically, can be that island example for the rest of the world to say, hang on a second, if an island nation like Indonesia, an island like Bali can become 100% sustainable, mm. other countries around the world will follow. And I hope that with upcoming events like G20, it is a fast track towards change, mm -hmm. but that we're doing it for the long term and for the right reasons. Great. Uh, you know, right here, I'd like to kind of put in a little plug for what we are doing as a company uh, and at L'Oreal itself in Indonesia and, and worldwide. We are redesigning our packaging to make it smaller and have lesser of a plastic footprint so that what goes out in the first place is reduced. And then beyond that, we are tracking innovations like uh, paper-based tubes that uh, are easier to recycle. Uh, we are also talking about refillables. So many of our brands like Kiehl's and in many other countries, have got refilling uh, strategies now. Uh, we've got refills for hair care with professional products. So there's a lot of lot of work that we are doing in order to reduce our plastic footprint. But you are right. I think the whole world in general needs to move faster. Everyone's trying to do their thing, and the beauty industry, you know, is is working in their efforts. And L'Oreal has had this commitment, what we call L'Oreal for the future, uh, for quite some time. And we are really focusing on on all these aspects. But again, we need. Uh, the youth like Malati and, and their energy and their speed and their ideas to come come to the table and really uh, push push this thing forward so that we, we don't end, end up with the catastrophe that is, that is being forecasted. But how do you see that not happening? Well, I, I was just going to say, I appreciate as well that you are bringing in these commitments and these goals right now in the conversation because I think the angle that you know I can bring to the table is the power of an individual taking action. Mm. But that is not the responsibility of the individual alone mm. to create change. Mm. So when I see a corporation and a business like L'Oreal taking action and sharing those commitments publicly, mm. showing that this is the direction that we're headed because there simply is no other way. It's the right thing to do. Mm. I celebrate that because that is where we see the systemic changes start to take place. Mm. And this is where I see also the difference maybe or the the roles that the public and the private sector play mm. where i've known that private sector moves a lot faster as mm. well mm. and in that way can show that it's possible mm. but also urge real policy to follow afterwards so what do you think what do you think is missing in terms of the policy framework in indonesia and what do you what what kind of message would you would you send out to the policy makers uh, to accelerate uh, this battle against plastic in indonesia I think there's always room to include communities at the front lines in the decision making process. So to policymakers, spend time in the DESAs, in the communities that are impacted by climate change hmm. and understand what it is that is needed. Hmm. But secondly, also gain more clarity in what exactly are the regulations. Hmm. And last but not least, I think we need to create stronger incentives hmm. for larger corporations that are maybe not as advanced or hmm. on the same page hmm. to get on the same track. because. Mm -hmm. Um, at the moment, business as usual still comes with very little to no consequence at all. Mm. And this needs to change, but from a top-down approach where there are incentives and there are consequences that currently don't exist. Right. And I think that's the role of leadership in politics in the right. political space. Right. One thing again which I'm which I'm very happy about is that the Indonesian government has has taken steps like announcing uh, by when the government wants to make Indonesia carbon neutral, by when we want to reduce how much uh, ocean plastic uh, and we are uh, as a brand Garnier in Indonesia working on a plan called e-recycle where we 
provide incentives to consumers. And Melati just talked about, you know, the ability to provide incentives to consumers for better habits. So we have this program called eRecycle where consumers waste uh, plastic, paper, and others can be collected from their home and they get uh, real benefits out of it. So it's, you know, monetizing monetizing their trash uh, and it's called prosperity through recycling. And that, that really uh, helps. Last year, we had a target of 100 tons to be collected and we did that. So I'm sure we are going to beat our target. We have more than 250,000 uh, people who've downloaded the app and they're using it. And it's very, very easy to use. I'd encourage all our users to, to download it. E-Recycle e app is available both on uh, Android and I iStore. Uh, just download the app, collect your trash, take a photo, and, and something like a Gojek will come your come to your house and collect it and you earn earn cash for trash. So, you know, it's uh, it's the perfect way to, to save the world, so to say and also earn a little bit of money on the trash that you're already just throwing away from your home. So Melati, what's next? You know, you've done, um, uh, say bye-bye to plastic bags, you've done Youthtopia, you've now starred in a movie. Um, for many, that would be like, yeah. you know, a life dream. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I'm a big believer that there's, again, always so much more to be doing. Uh, I, I definitely feel like on an individual base, the next exciting challenge for me to tackle is that with all of this experience and with all of this knowledge, you know, I'm sitting in, in conference rooms with the leading scientists of the world, with entrepreneurs of incredible, innovative solutions, and I'm I have this mentorship from them and I'd like to channel that into challenging corporations and governments to take bolder steps because yes, you did mention, uh, you know, the announcing of goals and the signing of commitments very much still on a voluntary base. And I think that the role of young people, but me as well, the next challenge is to make sure that it's not just a signature or a photo opportunity, but it is that long term change that we want to see. So that's where, uh, yeah, we're staying busy, meeting with uh, these uh, different industry leaders mm -hmm. to make sure that we're all creating the future that we want to be I believe of. I believe last week you spoke to 1,300 people uh, in a public forum, um, all senior executives or yeah. CEOs. Uh, what was your message to them? Yeah, it was what an audience, first and foremost. Uh, I'm fresh off the stage. Uh, I was at the Swiss Economic Forum. And, you know, you as a young change maker, you go up on stage and you hear the audience, a big room, all of a sudden, quiet. <laughs> and you think, okay, what is the message? Here I have decision makers in the room. What can I say? And um, really, essentially, the, the message of uh, what I tried to share was, again, including young people and communities at the front lines into the rooms of the decision making process hmm. but really the knowledge that if you walk away from that room right now and you don't center sustainability as a priority in everything that you do you will not have a license to operate in the future hmm. and this is something that has to be a realization and a top priority for every business leader yeah. because there is no business on a dead planet yeah. and nature and biodiversity every living thing on earth at the moment is dying hmm. If we do not change our decisions, if we do not change the products that we are using, if we do not change our lifestyle, it's mm. not a sacrifice. And I know we talked about this earlier because there is innovation today that exists. There mm. is technology that exists and mm. there certainly is the budget mm. that exists mm. to pivot, to mm. shift, to mm. change. It's whether or not we are brave enough mm. to make those decisions. Mm. So that's hopefully what I tried to uh give into the ears of 1,300 CEOs. Um, but I think this is the power and this is the message and expectation of your consumers. I hope I hope uh, a large part of the, your audience was listening to you and they take that message back. Um, also want to tell our audiences, uh, L'Oreal has had sustainability at the center of our operations for, for over a decade now. Uh, like I just uh, told the audience, we have a program in Indonesia called Garnier Green Beauty, which uh, encourages and incentivizes consumers to collect trash, which they would have other thro otherwise thrown away just in their trash bags, uh, and, and give it back to an app called eRecycle. Mm -hmm. And it incentivizes them by giving them real cash uh, for trash. Um, I know we've uh, explained the program to you. Uh, anything uh, you would want to give us as inputs for yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, I'm a big believer in celebrating steps in the right direction. And I do believe that, especially in the culture of Indonesia, this is the way forward. Um, I always ask the question, actually, in, in classrooms, you know, who here buang sampah? Mm. 
if there's no waste management, you tend to toss your trash just wherever. Mm -hmm. But would you throw away money? No, of course you wouldn't, mm. right? Mm. Um, and that's the power that these type of programs give because one, it, it puts a label and puts the value back on these products so people are collecting them. And if they're able to give them back to be reused into something else, that's the step forward. But where I'm curious of is also the next step behind the, again, the responsibility of the consumer to be part of this program. Mm. What is the product innovation from the source at L'Oreal. Mm. I'm sure there's a lot of research and innovation and product design changes mm. that are happening, mm. but just curious to hear more. Well, thank you. Thank you for giving me the stage to talk <laughs> a little bit about the efforts that uh, L'Oreal is making. I think the first one we'll start, let's start off with the juice itself. Uh, we are committed to making 100% of our products out of green chemistry. So this is from products that are sustainable, ingredients that are sustainable, mm. no nasties, all the pro uh, you know products that are good for, good for using. So that's the, that's the first thing. Second, we are innovating on packaging in, in terms of the fact of reducing the, the size of our packaging, reducing the footprint of our packaging and making sure that what, what is designed itself is designed with a sustainability point of view. So, you know, we have we have very strong goals, we have very strong commitments, and, and these commitments and uh, achievements uh, midway have been recognized by various awards uh, all over the world. And, and I'm really proud of the fact that, uh, you know, like we are seen as a beauty innovator with, you know, a massive portfolio of brands, and consumers always think of our brands as the best beauty products in the world, uh, among uh, policy makers, change makers, among the youth, even among our consumers, uh, we are seen as a brand, as a company that's taking steps in the right direction. So in Indonesia, uh, very recently, a completely unknown organization, unknown to us, ran a survey and asked consumers, which are the brands you would choose as being sustainable and taking steps in the sustainability direction. And much to our surprise, Garnier came out in the top three. So, you know, this was proof of the fact that all the work that we are doing is being recognized by consumers. So uh, just a little bit from our side. So Malati, we've talked a lot about uh, say goodbye to plastic bags. We've talked about Youthtopia, your movie, uh, working with change makers around the world. But let's come back home. You know, fourth largest country in the world, uh, one of the youngest populations in the world, 29 year median age. What would be your message to the Indonesian youth who want to start making their life more sustainable or taking steps towards sustainability? What can each one of them do uh, every day that will make them feel that they are contributing th to this whole effort of change making that you are doing? Mm, I love this question because there's so much power and a lot of our conversation was about the systemic change, corporate leadership, governmental leadership that is needed, hmm. but never underestimate the power that you have to create change um, and this is something that no matter where you are from no matter how old you are you can get started mm -hmm. that be it is overwhelming because where do we get started mm -hmm. when we talk about sustainability it can feel very overwhelming mm -hmm. it can feel very big you can feel lost and say but what does it matter mm -hmm. what what will it change if it's just my action? Mm. Um, and I think the way you break it down is first and foremost, find something that you're interested in about. Are you, you know, for me, what got me interested was this plastic pollution, specifically plastic bags. But for you, it might be food and the food waste that's mm. happening, mm. or maybe the electricity and the lights and the way that we use energy. Mm. Find something that you're interested about and find something that you're connected to. Mm. From there, learn as much as you can about it. And I think that this is something that's important and worth mentioning that in the sustainability world, it is an endless learning journey. Mm. And I think the first step is much easier than we think. We do not have to wait for the perfect business model or the perfect plan to get started. We just have to start because from that moment, when we do make the changes, we'll learn and we'll find better alternatives. We'll find better solutions, but we've started and we're learning and mm. from there we can make the changes we need mm. so i think that goes on an individual base as well mm -hmm. go to your house pick one room as a challenge pick one room your bathroom your living room your bedroom and find how you can make it more sustainable whether it be the packaging the design of it the uh you know consumption in your fridge the food you're eating just pick one room and change it from there wonderful so Remember, change can start at home in one room 
with your daily habits and that can make a difference because again like i said we are the fourth largest country in the world we have one of the youngest populations in the world so there's a long runway ahead of us if we all make a change the future is going to be better than what it is today so in order to make this a little lighter than it has been now <laughs> we are going to play a game uh, this game is called convince the world so the way it works is i'm going to show you a picture and in that using that picture you have to convince the world in one minute about that action okay so the first picture is ta da reduce Ooh, reduce okay okay convince the world ready set go okay. reduce did you know that in our lifetime by 2050 nanti ada lebih banyak plastic than fish in our oceans what we do not want to have fishing and then pulling up plastic so it is up to us each and every one of us individuals corporations but also governments to reduce as much as possible so what do you think did i manage to convince you to reduce your plastic waste you get a bonus on this answer because you, know. you did it in 30 seconds <laughs> and not one minute fantastic we don't have time to waste yeah though. that's that's important that's very important to remember we don't have time to waste okay and the second picture is dun, 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 dun. Dun. recollect Re-collect. okay nah okay recollecting don't you ever use a product and then keep it and it piles and piles and piles and piles and you don't know what to do with it well there are incredible programs all around near you whether that be a bank sampa or programs like at l'oreal for you to collect your trash and give it back so you actually can earn things like money back so what do you think guys did i convince you to collect your trash and i want to add over here please use the garnier green beauty e recycle app download that on android and ios uh, ios and get cash for trash that you already have at home and we did that in 40 seconds yeah Bravo. there we go jangan buang sampah jangan buang uang and the third picture is reuse oh reuse This one is a great one and actually the picture the examples on the picture are alternative so you have alternatives to plastic uh, toothbrushes you use the bamboo you have alternatives to the earbuds also bamboo uh, different things this is actually so beneficial because in the long term it's actually cheaper for you to use these and cheaper for the damage to the environment because it's environmentally friendly and also i use all of these things so Come on, join and let's reuse the products and not use plastic. There is no excuse for single use. Fantastic. Another bonus answer with less than uh, with less than the time given. So Malati the wise, thank you for spending time with us and uh, today gives me a great amount of optimism for the future. At 21, if Malati has managed to do so much in terms of bring about change in her sphere, but then spread it all over the world, 60 countries for bye-bye plastic bags, Youthtopia around Asia, uh, the movie that is going global. If this can be done at 21, the world is in good hands. So Malati, thank you very much for doing so much and all the best for your efforts for the future uh, to make the world a better place and focusing on sustainability. Uh, we are behind you. We are trying to pass on your message as L'Oreal uh, through this podcast. Uh, and we wish you all the best for all your endeavors. Thank you so much for having me and jangan lupa anak muda mungkin hanya 25% dari populasi dunia tapi kita 100% dari masa depan and that future starts today and it starts with all of you. That's Yay! a fantastic closure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye-bye. Bye.